I fell in love with hip hop really early. I mean, you have to understand how weird that was for a young Korean American girl who, you know, whose parents ran a toy store to suddenly be listening to Too Short and NWA and DOC and Run DMC late, late at night, tuning into college radio, in bed, in the dark, with headphones on. Like, that was not the normal path. I fell in love with the music and the culture, and I wanted to find my own way of being involved. So it wasn't going to be by rhyming, dancing, or doing anything else like that. I just wanted to document it for fanatics like myself. You know, there were only a few hip hop magazines. I would read all of them cover to cover. I started writing to all of the offices and just begging for, you know, some type of internship. And then when I moved to New York, I got that shot. And nobody could tell me that that wasn't like the greatest gig in the world. I remember going to clubs that I had no business going to, being in places that I really must have looked like an alien. And I think that being an alien is kind of like traveling in one place, right? So I didn't get to travel the world, but I was always very, very different than everybody who was around me. I think that that fed a certain kind of curiosity. It also made me very, very aware that I could not just follow the traditional Korean American child path of like, you're either a doctor or a lawyer, or you're just a failure. Um, I think I was just ready to bite the bullet and be that failure to my parents and fight that fight. I think there's two ways to look at the idea of a hero. For one thing, I find that rather than propping up certain people who have created great work and making them my hero, I just like to appreciate the work for what it is. If, like, I love Miseducation by Lauryn Hill. Does that make her my hero? Not at all. And I think that that might have something to do with working in the music industry, meeting a lot of your so-called idols, and then realizing that you don't have that much in common with them, or maybe you don't like certain aspects about their real personality. And I don't want that to take away from how impactful their work is, right? So I think that I separate those two. You cannot be a hero unless there's a villain, right? So I think it's really key to identify the moments in life when you are challenged, um, when you are doubted, when you are disrespected, when you are attacked, and see that as like a moment for you to step up. So there's definitely been moments in my life and in my professional career where I just felt angry or I felt misunderstood and that made me go harder or I don't need to stay here just because it's supposed to be the you've made it moment. If it doesn't fit me, if it doesn't work for me, if I don't feel like I'm ever going to really impact this place because they're putting me in a box or they can't even tell the difference between me and another person who is of the same ethnicity, then I need to move on. And I think that that's an example of it not being a hero, but a villain who really pushes you in the right direction. I think heroism is about doing the right thing, not just the thing that you can get away with. You know, are you being heroic because you got that gig or you made a lot of money or you hit 100,000 followers. Is that heroic? Are there things that you could be doing that are heroic that will get you to that place? Absolutely. But it seems too goal-based and not journey-based. In my experience, it is the people around you, the people helping you, the people working with you, the people that you mentor, those are a lot of times the heroes that you don't necessarily identify because they're supporting as opposed to starring. <laughs>